What's up everybody? So glad that you're with us here for Arrows Online. This is going to be an amazing day. The power of the resurrection we're going to talk about today. But first, let's always start with the code of the arrows. Are you guys ready? Number one, we are going to honor God. We're going to do that by loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, say heart. All of our soul, say soul. All of our mind, say mind. And all of our strength, say strength. We can do that with three ways here at Freedom Church. We're going to worship God with all of our heart. We're going to give Him everything that we got. We're going to pray to Him every single day. He loves to hear your voice. And number three, we're going to read your Bible. We love the Word. I love it so much. Uh, number two, we're going to honor others. We're going to do that by loving our neighbor as ourselves. I hope you love yourself, so love your neighbor also. And to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. You guys probably know that by the golden rule, right? Number three, we're going to honor the house. See, house. Honor your house by leaving it better than you found it. Whether you're leaving the bathroom, your bedroom, the kitchen, wherever you're at, leave it better than you found it. And the people that you come in contact with, leave them better than you found them also. Leave somebody with some encouragement today. Let them feel better about who they are in Jesus, all right? Check this out. We'll see you back here in a moment. I think that okay. sounds good. Well, you look great, except well, for this, this one hair. That one? And that then one? it's going to be perfect. That, okay, thank oh, you. Hey, uh, we're recording. What, wait, we're what? We're recording. We're recording? They're watching. Oh, no. Mm. Hey, what? Hello, everyone. Hey. This is Welcome Arrows to today's silly segment. My name is Pickles. Good to see you. And this is my friend, Caitlin. Hi. Hi, everybody. So excited. Oh, yeah. This is that really... you have me here with you. Yeah. Isn't it nice to be with me? It's amazing. Yes. He's amazing. Um, so today is puns with puppets. I am the puppet. Yes. Caitlin is not. Yes, I'm not a puppet. Not today. No. No. Okay. So we're going to tell jokes to one another and we're going to make each other laugh. It would be funny. It's going to be fun. I don't know though no. if I'm going to be as funny as you are. Well, I feel like you that had... is difficult. Yeah. yeah, you have more experience. I have been a puppet my whole life. You're Pickles, Mr. Pickles. Mr. Pickles. Yeah. Some people call me Pickles, other people call me Dill, but uh, mostly <laughs> just Pickles. It's nice, thank you. Okay, well. I, I feel confident that you're gonna make me laugh, so I wanna I wanna hear this. Okay, so I've got a joke for you. Are All you right, ready? I'm ready. So, I just came back from a once in a lifetime vacation. Let me tell you what. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Never again. Right, once in a once lifetime. Once in a lifetime. That's oh, why. Okay, that's okay, okay, why okay. it's a pun, Caitlin. See, that Thank was that you. was yeah. funny. I don't know that I have a pun though that is as great as that. Well, give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. Wait, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. How does Moses make his coffee? I don't know how. He brews it! <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good one, Kaylee. I don't know. See, I, I don't have as much experience. You're way funnier than well, I am. Well, I've got another one for you. Are you okay, ready? Okay, I'm ready. I want to hear it. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? How many tickles? Ten. Ten, Ten tickles. Ten tickles. Ten tickles. Tentacles. Get it? Tentacles. Tentacles. Like, oh, That's like, ah. Oh. Okay, that was okay. great. That was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm, let me think here. Okay, I've got it. Okay. What kind of man was Boaz before he got married? Boaz. I don't know what. You know Boaz? I know Boaz, yes. Before he got married. Was what? Ruthless. Get it? Oh, Ruthless. Be coming, baby. Yeah. That's the Bible joke. It's great. It's I a like Bible, Bible joke. joke. These are puns. Bible puns. Yes, those yes. are the best. Yes. All right, give me one more. Come on. I okay. know there's a good one in there. Okay. You know whiteboards? Whiteboards. Whiteboards that you walk. That With you... like dry erase. Uh -huh, okay, yes. whiteboards, yes. Those are remarkable. Remarkable. Yes. Remarkable. Because oh, you can remarkable. mark them, them again. Yes. Yes. That's very funny. That was, yes. that, was, that was great. Okay. Okay. You go it in. See, I'm not even telling jokes. These are, this is this is who I'm working with today. See, so silly. I don't have the experience in jokes. It's okay. This always, always I always miss the pickles. Always tell the arrows, do your best. Do okay, your best. so this do your best. Okay. <laughs> I don't know any other jokes I'm gonna have to learn. This is where we say cut for just one second. Why he looks at the jokes down here? Okay. 
Okay, I've got it. Still your head down. All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Brace yourself. Are you ready I'm for this one? I'm I don't what? think you're ready for this I one. I don't think, let me, okay. Okay, All right. go ahead. All right, ready? If you need help building an arc, I know a guy. I know a guy. Uh, I uh, know Noah. You know, guy. Noah built an art. Get it? <laughs> That's so right? Funny. Oh, God. Yes. That was funny. Mm. Hey, let me tell you. Have you ever tried to eat a clock? Have I ever tried to eat a clock? Yeah, a clock. Ah, uh, no. It's very time consuming. <laughs> it is very time consuming. Good that was consuming. funny. That was, uh, that was uh, awesome, Pickles. That right. was awesome. Oh, thank you yes. very much. Yes. So, who do you think today's win with? We want to know who was funnier. Leave a comment in the thing, Mr. The Pickles thing below. Okay. Or Caitlin. Okay. I say pickles, but also Caitlin was good. I mean, I tried, but. So you tried a bit. He has more experience. Give her a hand for trying a bit. All right, Errols, we're going to send it past to Travis right now. He's so awesome. Enjoy this next piece. All right, guys, this is the moment we've been waiting for. This is the climax of the entire storyline of the Bible right here, right now. All the way from Genesis chapter one to where we are in the story of Jesus. Every great story has to have a climax, this moment where everything in the story builds, all the characters, all the drama, all everything just converges to this one moment, this one point in the story and we are there last week we left off with Jesus having the Passover with his disciples and we know that now he's gone to a garden to pray with them he's in this moment where he knows what's about to happen he knows that he is about to go to the cross so he goes to the garden to pray he begins to pray uh, to the Father, he says, uh, God, if there's any other way, Abba, if there's any other way, then take this cup from me, but not my will, but your will be done. He's been teaching us this entire time to pray that way, not my will, but your will be done. So he gets, begins to pray that way in the garden. And he can, continually goes back to his disciples. And what are they doing? They're asleep. Three times he goes back back and forth to praying to the Father, to his disciples. And each time he finds his disciples, they're asleep until finally he says, that's enough, time to wake up. My betrayer is here. And one of his closest friends, Judas, has decided to betray Jesus. And he comes into the garden and gives Jesus a kiss on the cheek and the these soldiers come and grab Jesus. And all of Jesus' closest followers, his, his disciples, run away and leave Jesus there, arrested. So Jesus is taken to a place uh, of the council of these religious leaders. It's called the Sanhedrin. And they begin to accuse Jesus of all this stuff. These false witnesses come in and tell lies about Jesus. And Jesus just stands there and listens until finally the high priest says, tell us the truth. Are you the son of God? Are you the Messiah? And Jesus says, I am. And that was all that they, they needed to hear. They were so angry that they began to tear their clothes and the soldiers would punch Jesus and say, prophesy. And they would spit on him and pull out his beard. They decide because Jesus was declaring to them that he was the son of God. He begins to quote out of Daniel that you're going to see the son of man lifted up high. That they had had enough, that they had to kill Jesus. And in the midst of all this, Peter is just outside and people begin to ask, hey, aren't you, aren't you with Jesus? Aren't you one of his followers? No, no, it's not me. Aren't you one of his disciples? No, I, I don't know this guy. Uh, you've been with Jesus. I know. I can tell by your voice. I can tell by your accent. You're one of his followers. No, I've never met this guy. I don't know who this Jesus is. Peter denies Jesus 
three times. So, so far Jesus has been betrayed by one of his closest friends. He's been rejected by the Jewish religious leaders. And now he's been denied by his closest follower, Peter, three times. So with that, Jesus is led away to the Roman governor named Pilate. Pilate interviews Jesus and trying to figure out what's going on with this guy and decides he's done nothing wrong. He's innocent of all these charges that are being brought against him. So he comes up with a plan. He says, it's Passover. And I normally set free one of the prisoners during this time. So he brings forth this rebel, this murderer named Barabbas. And he puts Barabbas in Jesus out in front of everyone and says, okay, who are you going to choose? Who do you want me to set free today? And they begin to cheer for Barabbas. And Pilate asks, what, what would you have me do with this Jesus? He's done nothing wrong. And they begin to cr- chant, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate washes his hands of the whole deal and says, fine. And so he sends him off Uh, to his execution squad. These Roman soldiers that begin to to beat Jesus, they take uh, thorns and they make it into a crown. They set it upon his head and they begin to beat him with with reeds and rods. They, They mock him by setting this robe upon him and putting a scepter in his hand. And finally, they walk him to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And they begin to to nail Jesus by his hands and his feet to this Roman cross. But there was something else nailed to that cross. It was this sign that read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And so they lift Jesus up on this cross. He's there with a crown upon his head and a sign that reads, this is the king. Jesus is being enthroned right now as king of the entire world, but everyone's missing it because they're looking with their natural eyes. They see this man that is broken and bruised upon the cross. But Jesus knows that he's becoming the sacrifice for the entire world and that he is being enthroned for the kingdom of God to come to the earth. So finally, he cries out with a loud voice. He says, it is finished. And with that, Jesus dies. They take him down from the cross. They, Joseph of Arimathea, this rich man, comes and asks Pilate for his body and places it in his very own tomb. So I thought you said at the beginning, Pastor Travis, this, this was the climax. This is the big deal. This is what's supposed to happen. But remember, I've told you that nothing with Jesus ends with tears. On the third day, some of the women that followed Jesus went to his tomb. What did they find? The stone had been rolled away. There's angels there ready to declare, hey, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? You're looking for Jesus. And friends, he is not here. He has risen. Go tell his disciples that I'm coming to meet them. So they run, they tell Peter and John. Peter and John have this foot race to get to the tomb. Guess what? Because if John's writing the gospel, he gets to say, I got there first. John goes, looks at the tomb and says, Peter, come look, Jesus has risen. Peter walks in and sees the grave clothes laying there. Jesus is nowhere to be found because Jesus is alive. After the course of a couple of weeks, Jesus shows himself to all of his disciples. He shows up, he eats with them. He shows them the scars in his hands. He shows them that he is alive. Friends, this is the climax of all of human history. This is the most important thing that has ever happened. Jesus beats Satan, sin, and death. Jesus rises from his own grave. This is the best news that we could ever have. That because of Jesus, that he... Listen to this. Remember that rebel, that murderer, 
that was standing next to Jesus. Jesus takes the place of this criminal and he takes the place of our sin. He takes our place upon the cross. He switches places with us. The death that we deserve, he died for us. But because he had no sin, death could not hold him and he rises from the grave. Friends, if you believe in Jesus, then you can share with him an eternal life. He's calling you, just like he called his disciples, to follow after him in this great kingdom life. Will you do it? Will you follow him? Will you be one of his disciples? Will you be like him and live forever? If you want to do that right now, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's pray together. Say this. Say, Jesus. I believe that you died for my sin, that you took my place upon the cross. And right now, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to make you the king that you came to be with your crown and with a declaration that you are king of the world. And Jesus, right now, I make you the king of my heart. And I want to follow after you into eternal life. Wash me with your blood. Make me brand new. And I'll follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Guys, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Jesus died for us. He saved us. He set us free from Satan, sin, and death. And now we get to live eternally with Him. Starting right now. Love you guys. Enjoy this amazing day. I love you. We'll see you next time.